Welcome everyone to today's video. As many of you have realized, we are still looking for the perfect laptop and we have not yet found it. So today we take a look on the next one, the Dell XP15 convertible all-in-one. It's a little bit special one and I will tell you in a minute why. And of course, when you order this, you get it in a brand new box, but this is a review unit I get for three weeks. This is why obviously the review unit is already slightly used. And what is this? Oh, it's a dongle or something. Power and I think USB power. C. Yeah, USB-C for your universal charging to share it with all your other USB-C devices. And this is some regular USB-C to old-fashioned USB-A. Also nice to have. And the box, of course, you get a brand new one and not a refurbished one. And this is the Dell XPS 15. To satisfy all the people migrating from Apple MacBooks, nice aluminum. Also, I personally like other things a lot, but that is, of course, very nice. And the reason I try this all-in-one, normally I'm not the greatest fan of so this all-in-one. You can also place like this and like a tablet, I guess, and just like a normal laptop. And this is Microsoft Surface there in the background that you sometimes see my videos. I figured I'm not the greatest fan of this kind of PC laptops for many other reasons. And maybe this tent thing is nice if you watch video with your family. And the reason I try this very specific model is that I don't want NVIDIA graphic and the XPS 15 are of course great and amazing here with this carbon fiber, what this is material and such. And the only problem is NVIDIA graphic. There's only one entry level configuration. The cheapest one obviously with Intel graphic and all the other one have NVIDIA graphic. And in Germany, it looks like they only sell the NVIDIA graphics. They do not sell this basic entry level configuration, so I cannot order the basic Intel only model. And obviously, so long term viewers and subscribers realize I want open source driver and this is why NVIDIA is not for me, due to no open chipset specifications, no open source drivers and in general all those problems with that. And then I accidentally found this all-in-one and this all-in-one has this very special Intel CPU with AMD graphics and that is nearly the only reason I went with this specific configuration to take a look at. And also, yeah, the keyboard is slightly funny though. The normal XPS 15 has a normal keyboard. The only drawback to save half a millimeter or so is some magnetic, they say, I think, keyboard. So this indeed is as little keyboard travel as all similar to MacBooks. Yeah, that's what you get for that. So my recommendation already ahead is you can just take the XPS 15 entry level option with Intel only graphic if this is sold in your region. And otherwise, if you don't care about NVIDIA graphic, of course, the uh, regular XPS 15 are very good as well, especially I personally might like the keyboard more. And in general, we will test this very special model and I will be very curious to see how this AMD integrated graphic performs here in this Intel CPU. Very interesting configuration also for me to test with Linux, especially with our built from source T2 SDE. And this is also why we do these videos to have all this exotic chips and configurations to test. Port wise, two times USB-C, SD card and they did not even skip on this battery charge indicator that even Apple cannot afford to put in Macs anymore. Nice touch bit here, of course. I also really like this material, this carbon fiber composite stuff. I really like it, especially as often with Macs I get some electricity fuss on charging, especially on international power grids. So some isolating material is very welcome. And on the other side, two more USB-C ports and a headphone jack. I know for all the Apple fans, it's hard to believe that manufacturers still find a place to put a headphone jack into their machines. And I guess a Kensington lock, at least that's what it looks from here. Power button, as I said, the travel reduced magnetic keyboard thing here and 4K display in this unit. The other entry level models come with full HD as well as this tent mode for your movie viewing pleasure. And that's the first unboxing of this so far really nice looking machine. 
and I will be really curious to see how the AMD graphic performs and in general also how this very special magnetic laviated short travel keyboard thing suits my needs. So that was a quick initial unboxing and don't forget to share, like and subscribe for all the review and in-depth Linux tinkering and AMD tuning to come. So let's do a quick test and see if this just boots into my trusty portable SSD. So we obviously have touch here on this quality machine, unlike other certain vendors who cannot ship touchscreen models. Let's see what is the BIOS key here. Escape, delete, something like that. Or not, yes, no, maybe. Not the greatest fan of this very short travel magnetic things, but apparently you cannot have everything. Either awesome AMD graphic or a compact keyboard. So what do we get here boot option wise? Obviously as is USB-C only I need to get the USB-C cable. Or actually you can also try this adapter. Here's boot manager, so here's the Q boot. I wonder what the BIOS hotkey is. Slightly annoying that each PC BIOS has another key for that. Hmm. At least we got the BIOS was pressing everything. As you may have seen briefly, there's also some LED light, sleep, something indicator. So without the Q boot, of course, we can get into our Linux boot stuff here. Added this to the latest kernel. Only wonder if this keyboard will be also sensitive to dust like the Apple ones. I sure hope not, but I guess we will only find out with time. Maybe at least they don't use 100 screws to put it in, so but time will show. Also, keyboard backlight, obviously. So actually there was something a little bit strange in regarding booting my portable SSD here. And I didn't add graphics, so normal people may not even notice because I think this mostly affected full disk encryption, entering my password. And after typing it blind and hoping that Linux was actually running, it is indeed no running. So not yet 100% sure what's up with this, but this may not be entirely the Dell machine's fault. Maybe this is rather some detail in regarding our Linux configuration. And let's see what frame buffer we have here. So this is Intel. Okay, so that is interesting that we still have Intel graphic. I thought we only have AMD then, as this was what we got this machine for. Also need to get used to the keyboard, obviously. Obviously LS PCI. So we have here hmm, no AMD directly showing up. That is currently Actually, no, there is AMD GPU. Do we really have here switchable graphic? Obviously, nice 4K display. Let's see if our configuration less XOR comes up here with something. Yeah, comes up with something. Obviously, super nice 4K display. In the meantime, I also don't mind this webcam placement there anymore because in the meantime, I figured it's more economic for me to have the display higher. So I rather prefer this display content being as high as possible and I nearly never personally use a web camera anyway, so I completely don't mind that the camera is down there. So yes, the picture is not amazing from down there, but who cares? And what did we get now here? Let me quickly change the high DPI scaling for this machine. So just my little bit static Linux config here later. And also we have 
touch very nice because in the meantime I really start to get to touch things even when I code in like XEMX I start to move windows around like this actually really getting used to this also you know type and yeah somehow I start to find it somehow so as so often those who can read all right an advantage here we even see AMD GPU trying to initialize here but we don't have the firmware I guess AMD GPU Vega M PFP however somehow it's at least not this VGA let's see do we have AMD okay we have actually display controller interesting why does it oh, okay so this is not VGA compatible hmm whatever strange however at least the Wi-Fi just works in Linux this is some Arteros or so So this just works and as I said some 10k Ateros PCI. So then let's emerge here the latest Linux firmware. I have updated them over the years. I thought I have a quite new version but maybe not. Just updated this the other day for the other Vega 20 or so. Regular not Intel combination Frankenstein graphics thing. So let's see if it works then. Coming from Git probably. And then let's see if this brings us AMD graphics and then I'm curious how the performance is obviously. But again this is only the first unboxing and first look and all the full review and more tips and tricks coming for the next video. So you certainly want to share, like and subscribe not to miss any of those. And I also realize already now this keyboard is a little bit short travel for myself. So I would probably rather get the regular XPS 15. Really a pity that they don't have this nice AMD graphic in there. As I don't think Nvidia get their act together with some open source or at least open register specification. It's really a pity that we should avoid quite some of the laptops just for the Nvidia graphics. So, Okay, so one reboot later and we have this AMD GPU. However, it says here DC create, here this display core or so. Number of connectors is zero. So this probably means we have this kind of hybrid graphics thing where there is no max to multiplex the video lanes, but instead the second GPU is not connected at all to any outputs. And we need to use this hybrid graphics stuff on Linux. There is some prime for that to have the second GPU render to the frame buffer of the first one. The only thing is that we mostly had Max, which didn't have this in the past. So we are just migrating back from Max to more useful machines again, because the Max had this Max thing. And now that I think about this, although it sounds technically inferior, maybe it isn't. First of all, it's simpler. So there is not a Max inside that can burn through or get liquid damage or such, or just fail with agent whatsoever. It also is more flexible. So instead of having this hardwired Max thing there, it's a software solution where we could, in theory, have very intelligent open source solutions in the future, hopefully, eventually. The only drawback is, of course, that I guess the Intel graphics then always needs to be powered on. With the Max, you could probably switch off the Intel graphic, but yeah, whatever. And it probably should list here somewhere with some provider thing. There we have it, list providers it is. And then we obviously also can use XRender to set the providers there and have the AMD GPU render the graphics. At least that is how it should work in theory. Just a quick compile test, just building the latest kernel for the test in front of it. So there you see that the AMD ThinkPad with AMD Ryzen had really good performance. So this took here 26 plus one, so some 27 minutes. So this is only 10 minutes, not such a high percentage faster than, than the much less power hungry AMD Ryzen we had in the AMD ThinkPad. So really not bad performance for this because I think this is a 60 watt part and the AMD Ryzen had a, I think 15 watt configurable thermal design power. So just some initial performance data of course later I will run Cinebench just for the comparison sake although I prefer Linux benchmarks. So this is 27 from 39 I think it was minutes. So of course it is quite a bit faster some 10 minutes down from 39 to 27, around 30%. However, again, 60 watt thermal design power, obviously also a much bigger and heavier case. No surprise that you are trading some thin and light and battery life for some more performance. I'm also curious how this 
dual CPU prime stuff here turns out slightly static configuration so you set this here with xrunder I think this was like set provider by name so provider output source and offload sync so by name or by numbered index so here this is of course not Dell's fault but in my opinion this should be a little bit more automatic with xorg or whatever modern graphic system we will end up with because this is of course a bit static so some dynamic switching would be welcome in this regard.